Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 onwards. Okay. Then Jesus came uh, with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Okay. Uh, so here Jesus is uh, at a place called Gethsemane and that's a garden and um, that's where he is praying. He is interceding uh, to the Heavenly Father. He is saying here, Lord, if it is your will, let this cup pass by. And it was so painful for Jesus and uh, to the point of death, he was uh, suffering and he was feeling the pain and uh, he was praying and he left few of the disciples at one place and he went further few steps uh, beyond that point and then uh, th he took Peter and he took John and James along with him and started to pray then when he was praying uh, and praying and praying he was feeling so much sorrowful and he was taking the help of uh, the disciples and he was asking the disciples uh, to pray for him, pray along with him, uh, you know. And the disciples were so tired and they were so much scared and they were unable to stay awake and then pray. But Jesus was staying awake and then he was praying. And it was a moment of so much sorrow, so much pain that Jesus was going through. The reason he was praying is, uh, is for our forgiveness. The reason he was in prayer was for our sake. The reason because of which he is going through this kind of a situation in his life is because of our mistakes, our sins and because of us that he is praying. For us he is praying and he knew that he would be taking the load of all the sins of the all the people of the whole world and he would take this a sin upon himself. He would take the mistakes of all the people of the world upon himself and he would be going through cross within a few hours and before he was going through the cross and he was experiencing this kind of a pain in his life and he was praying, he was kneeling down and was interceding in the presence of the Lord and within few hours he will be taken by the soldiers and he will be put on the cross and there the real uh, pain would be uh, experienced right on the cross and the real struggle and the real suffering will be there on the cross for Lord Jesus Christ before he was going through the cross and he was uh, uh, praying in the garden of Gethsemane and uh, what I understand from this is that there's a pattern going on uh, in the whole of the scriptures. There's a pattern going on in the ministry of Jesus. There's a pattern going on in our lives also. You know, certain things uh, proceed before uh, an event. And the thing which uh, proceeds before an event is as good as the event. Right? I'll try to explain so that you'll be able to understand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What we call is a foreshadow of uh, the real thing that we are able to uh, see happening uh, even before the event has taken place. So before the event of the cross is taking place, before just before that, we are seeing a, a foreshadow of uh, the cross situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He was not on the cross, but he was experiencing the excruciating pain which he would undergo uh, when he goes on to the cross. You understand my point? Right. So uh, already, even before he was going through the cross, even before he would go on to the cross, that suffering has already started in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So he was experiencing that and he was seeking the help of uh, his disciples. Right. Ah, you know, before something happens in our life, 
say a death of uh, somebody in our family, we will be getting the signals that something is happening, something wrong is going to happen, something bad is going to happen, right? And even before something good happens in our life, and we will be getting an indication uh, before some good happens in our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the kind of intuition we get. That's the kind of uh, uh, sense we will be having. That's the kind of, you know, uh, spirit move we will be experiencing that God uh, will be uh, revealing to us uh, uh, the things which are going to happen in the uh, immediate future in our lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why I am telling this pattern is you will be able to understand as we are progressing in the message, right? Even for uh, uh, any, any kind of a miracle which was happening, before that uh, we see a similar miracle would be happening. Amen. Before Jesus has fed 5,000 people, you know, uh, another miracle was happening that uh, 4,000 people were being fed. And whatever, I, I cannot tell you the sequence if 4,000 was the first or 5,000, feeding 5,000 was the first, but whatever. Uh, uh, one event has taken place and immediately another event also has taken place. So, uh, we should be able to see this pattern and able to understand uh, the pattern. When we understand this pattern which is taking place in the Bible, you know, in the life of Jesus Christ, in the life of so many people in the Bible, and all across the Bible, if you see, then nothing is happening by an accident. Nothing is happening just like that. Uh, nothing is happening, you know, without any notice, right? Everything is happening with a notice. Everything is happening, you know, uh, with, uh, with an advanced announcement. Everything is happening uh, by being told. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The scriptures say that God does nothing like an accident. He does everything, you know, after revealing to his prophets and to his servants and to his uh, priests. And they announce, they make an announcement. Only after that, you know, we see things happening, right? About Jesus coming, we see the foreshadow of the cross and uh, we see the foreshadow of the coming of the Lord, even in the Old Testament times. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? And we see Isaiah was announcing that unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and a wonderful counselor and a mighty God. We see those verses right in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. And we see these verses. Uh, when we see these verses, we see that uh, somebody was born during that time, his name was Emmanuel. But it was not the Messiah and it was not Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right. So we see the foreshadow of the things which would happen. Amen. Mm. See, Israelites were going through uh, the wilderness for 40 years and a long journey through the wilderness. And they were going across uh, through the, uh, you know, hard time and through difficult times and tough situations and uh, we see that happening. Again, we see in the life of Jesus that he was uh, uh, fasting and praying for those 40 days. So these 40 days resemble those 40 years of uh, the wilderness of uh, uh, the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you understand, right? We, when we see the life of uh, Elisha and we see the life of Elijah, it is a prototype again. It's a similar uh, sequence we see. The miracles which were happening through the life of Elijah, similar miracles were happening through the life of Elisha as well. Hallelujah. Ten miracles uh, have taken place in the life of Elijah. And again, I counted the numbers of number of miracles which have taken place in the life of Elisha. It was 20 in number. Okay, so it was double. That means the double portion was given to Elisha. And what we understand is that, you know, the miracles also have been doubled in the life of or the ministry of Elisha. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What we see is that the things which are happening in the life of Elijah, the similar things we see in the life of Elisha. Right. Again, Elijah was uh, uh, having an attire like, you know, uh, covering himself with the uh, a skin of a camel and then and eating honey and eating locusts and that was the food and that's the kind of lifestyle of a prophet and similar kind of a person we see uh, that is in the new testament again uh, about john the baptist he was also wearing a similar clothes like that hallelujah and you know what i'm trying to say is that 
look at everybody's life there is a reference point you look at everybody's life there is a, a you know cross reference somewhere in the old testament or in the new testament itself you know you look into anybody's life you take any miracle in the bible you'll see a repetition of a similar miracle happening in the life of another person okay praise the lord hallelujah with this what we understand is that jesus has fed 5000 people again he has fed 4000 people and we see the pattern with this pattern what can we understand is that jesus will also feed us amen that is the pattern we should be able to understand and appreciate amen so again here in in garden of gethsemane jesus was going through a very stressful moment he was going through a very hard moment in his life and it was so hard for him that it was just like a death that it is written in the scriptures uh, that he was going through garden of gethsemane in his life praise the lord right again we here in luke 22:44 we see that when jesus was you know crying weeping in the presence of the lord in garden of gethsemane and the tears uh which were coming down from his ears uh fr- from his eyes uh were like blood the blood was coming like uh, tears from him from his eyes right you understand uh it's a uh, it's something like you know how we get sweat like because of the stress because of the strain because of the hardship uh if we are experiencing pulling something heavy which we are not able to do which is difficult to pull pushing something across you know which is hard to do that and we sweat so much profusely likewise when jesus was going through this kind of a situation he was bleeding profusely right when we see that he is bleeding profusely uh, at the garden of gethsemane where again was he bleeding he was bleeding on the cross right so what we understand is at garden of gethsemane he was bleeding again on the cross he was bleeding and in garden of gethsemane he was going through a point of uh, uh, death kind of a situation in his life and again on the cross he was dying and he just died right so in garden of gethsemane his disciples were sleeping they have just you know not able to understand the heart of jesus were not able to help jesus or not able to be alongside jesus uh, you know but they were giving up on jesus or uh, they were running away they were just you know not mindful about the pain jesus was in undergoing praise the lord hallelujah now we understand yes or no are you all with me uh, similarly every miracle jesus does everything jesus was doing it was like a repetitive jesus opened the eyes of a blind man it happened again not just second time but it happened again and it happened again and it happened again hallelujah once jesus was uh, taking a blind man out of the village and he took him out of the village and jesus has put uh, you know mud to the eyes of this blind man and when jesus has applied mud to to the eyes of this blind man this blind man was able to see little bit what jesus did was that he did the same thing again he touched the eyes of this blind man and this blind man was able to see better what we understand from this is uh, about the second touch hallelujah just not once but second time jesus has touched this blind man in our life also we need the touch one more time in our life right mm we've experienced jesus before say one week ago a two days ago and we want even more hallelujah somebody is uh, giving a testimony that they are feeling better uh better in the sense they want god again one more time in their life they want to become much better right so we see the reputation of a miracle we see that we want it even more and we see that it has happened to one person and it can happen to another person as well amen many people ask me to pray for cancer because they know that i prayed for my mother and she has received healing from cancer right hallelujah without a uh, chemotherapy you know she is healed from cancer amen so uh, pe- when people come across this news they ask me if somebody is suffering with cancer they ask me for a prayer like that and i surely uh, i will be praying for them right what we understand from them is that you know a certain person is healed from cancer 
and another person also can be healed from cancer. It's the same God. Amen. It's the same miracle which God can do again and again. It's the same disease which can be curbed by the prayer. It, it is the same disease which can be destroyed with the help of prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? What do we call this? We call this reputation. We call this reputation. Hallelujah. Yes or no, right? Shall we all say reputation? Wherever you are sitting in your outside, in your car or anywhere, you know, uh, you, if you are listening to my message, uh, just say along with me, reputation. Mm, reputation. We know a sportsman who hits a century and again he is coming to play and everybody is sitting with a great expectation, uh, uh, thinking that he will hit another century. He will score one more time. And uh, when everybody is expecting that this man will score some big runs, big score and he will bring victory in the sport to that particular nation and everybody is waiting for that and this man would surely, you know, again play so very well and meet the expectation of the crowd, of the people and then he will bring victory to the nation and he will become a hero. And why? This man is being clapped at. Why this man, you know, uh, uh, is being looked high upon or why is being appreciated? Because every time he comes to play, he plays very well, right? Ah, we call it reputation. He does it well. Again and again and again and again. Every time he comes to play, he does well, right? Similarly, Jesus again and again and again, he will be able to do in our life. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is that this pattern is repetitive. The pattern in the Bible is repetitive. You know, it comes again and again. It happens again and again. Amen. So the creation has taken place. Organs were put into the human being and, you know, life was put into the human being and the like a statue mold was made from the mud. Uh, and from this mud, a man's life has come when God has breathed his, you know, breath into this stone or into this mud and it has come, it has become like a human body, right? A miracle has happened, a miracle has taken place, a creation has taken place. Hallelujah! What might happen is the devil might destroy a few of the organs in our body. God can repeat the creation in our life again. He is the creator. He is still existing. He is still there. He will still recreate organs in our life. He will recreate health in our life. He will recreate energy in our life. He will recreate strength in our life. Hallelujah. The Lord is the same. He is unchanging and He has not changed at all. For our sake, He is just the same. Yesterday, today and forever. Now, you know, if we are being destroyed or if we are experiencing a destruction, if we are experiencing death, He can give life back to us again. Why? How do you know that? Because first time He gave us life. He gave the human race a life. He, can, he gave a human being life and He can give it to us one more time. Amen? So, what's the message today? I always encourage interaction amongst the people who are listening. How do you want to interact along with me? Can you remind me of another miracle which has happened twice? Hallelujah! If a miracle has happened in your life twice, if you are seeing any miracle happening in the Bible twice, okay, same incident, we see that it's mentioned several places in the four Gospels, right? I'm not talking about the same incident. I'm talking about different incidents, similar incidents. Hallelujah! One leper came to Jesus and he was saying, if you are willing, you heal me, make me whole. And Jesus has touched him and this leper was healed. Now this time what happened was, 10 more people have come, right? If one person is healed, it, the news has spread and this time 10 people have come and Jesus has healed all the 10 of them. A reputation, hallelujah, repeat of a miracle. Hallelujah. Can you also tell me what reputation are you able to see? In life of Elisha, we see a reputation of the life of Elijah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God who was with David was also with Solomon. 
God who was with Moses was also with Joshua. The Lord who gave victories to Moses, the same Lord gave victories to Joshua again. God who gave victories to Nathan the prophet and God gave victories to uh, Isaiah the prophet. And God who gave victories to Isaiah the prophet, God gave victories to Jeremiah the prophet. Hallelujah. Right? You know, Jesus raised a dead person, a boy, you know, and Jesus raised a girl, dead person, you know, to life. Hallelujah. He repeated the miracle and he again raised Lazarus from the dead. Three miracles, three times the dead were raised. Now, the devil should have some sense, right? The message which we are listening now, the devil has not heard this message before, right? So that's why it doesn't know. It should have had some sense. A God, a man who has raised a boy from the dead, a man, a God uh, who has raised a little girl from the dead, this God who has raised Lazarus from the dead, what if we kill him? Will he not come to life? The devil should have had some sense in its brain <laughs> or it, in its head. That's why we say that its head been crushed. Its head has been crushed in the cross. The head being crushed. Is it like, you know, you're killing a snake by its head and then destroying the head? Is it about that? No, it's about the idea of the demon. It's about the idea of Satan that God would destroy Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the cross, he had destroyed the senses of the devil. On the cross, he has confused the devil. On the cross, he has destroyed the idea of the devil. Amen. That is the meaning of the head of the devil being crushed. Hallelujah. Mm. What do we understand from this message today? That God can do it again and again in your life. If he has done something in your wife's life, then, you know, Miracle follows in your life as well. Amen. If uh, somebody has been infected by Corona uh, in the family and they are healed, if it has affected the other person in the family, even then God is going to heal the other person. Amen. So God does miracles like that. Like that reputation, what are you able to observe? This pattern, if uh, we are able to observe, then it will be really glorious. One thing I would like to tell is that Jesus came for the first time in his first coming. He came onto this earth to save sinners, deliver us. And again, he is going to come back again. It's just not the end of the story. 